This is an oscillating sprinkler. In this video, we'll take a look at the mechanism inside to see how it works. Before we jump into the inner workings of an oscillating sprinkler, let's first see what are the key components involved. Let's get started. First, this is the hose connector. This is where you connect your garden hose. It's the entry point for water into the sprinkler. This is the oscillator tube with a series of spray nozzles. An oscillating sprinkler is used for watering residential lawns or gardens. It provides even water coverage to a wide rectangular area by spraying a fan-shaped curtain of water back and forth. The oscillating mechanism is powered by the water flowing through the oscillator tube. No other energy source is needed. These are the sliding tabs. When you move the tabs closer together, the width of the spray pattern narrows. When you move them apart, the width increases. We'll look at the adjustment tabs mechanism in more detail later in this video. This is the end plug that allows you to drain the unit. In most oscillating sprinklers, a cleaning needle is also integrated into the end plug. The cleaning needle is used to clear debris from the nozzles, ensuring that the water spray remains consistent. Now, let's see how the mechanism inside the sprinkler works. The sprinkler is made up of two sub-assemblies, the fixed sub-assembly, which is stationary and mounted on the frame, and the oscillating sub-assembly, which rotates in relation to the fixed sub-assembly. The oscillating sub-assembly is actually composed of two mechanisms. First, we have the drive mechanism that converts a jet of water into a low-speed rotational output. This is the water wheel or turbine. As water flows through the sprinkler's body, it strikes the blades of the water wheel just before entering the oscillator tube. This impact transfers some of the water's kinetic energy to the wheel, causing it to spin at high speed. The water wheel is connected to the gear train used to slow its fast rotational input speed down to the slow output speed required for the oscillator tube ensuring proper water distribution. The last gear in the gear train is actually mounted to the fixed sub-assembly, enabling the oscillator sub-assembly to rotate around it. The second mechanism alternately changes the direction of rotation of the hydraulic wheel. The sliding tabs are mounted on the fixed sub-assembly by means of rotary detent mechanism. It consists of a set of teeth on the tab's body and a corresponding series of notches on the sprinkler's body. When you adjust the tabs, the notches engage with the corresponding teeth at different positions. This engagement creates a slight resistance that holds each tab in place until sufficient force is applied to move them. The tab body has a slot through which a stop mounted on the oscillating sub-assembly travels. By moving the tabs, we can reduce or increase the slot length and therefore adjusting the travel of the oscillating sub-assembly. But how can we change the direction of rotation when the stop reaches the end of its travel? There's an arm mounted just above the stop. This arm controls a diverter plate that pivots between two water inlets. The purpose of the diverter plate is to direct the flow of water alternately from one inlet to the other, ensuring that only one inlet is open at any given time, while the other remains closed. The first inlet allows the water to turn the water wheel clockwise, while the second allows it to turn counterclockwise. During operation, water flows through the first inlet to turn the water wheel. When the stop reaches the end of its travel, the arm is pushed back in the opposite direction, pivoting the deflector plate, closing the first inlet and letting water flow through the second one, changing the direction of rotation of the water wheel. This action is repeated each time the arm reaches the end of its travel in both directions, causing the sprinkler to oscillate back and forth. The last component is a pressure relief valve, which regulates the water pressure inside the sprinkler body. It consists of a disc mounted on a spring. If water pressure exceeds a certain level, it will compress the spring, allowing water to flow directly to the oscillator tube, bypassing the water wheel and releasing access pressure, ensuring that the sprinkler operates within safe limits. I really hope you found this video informative and interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.